Are you balding or have a receding hairline? Have you tried almost everything to regrow your locks? Nine times out of ten, you probably have. It's wild the lengths we go to to hold on to our lustrous strands, yet sometimes we're not so lucky. From salon treatments to natural remedies, there seems to be no cure for balding. Until now, it's been widely believed balding is unavoidable. If it's in your genes, you're doomed. But surprisingly, there has been new research that suggests otherwise. In today's video, let's discuss what causes balding and answer the most asked question. Can you really prevent it? Let's get started. What exactly is balding? Almost everyone loses a bit of hair, with about 50 to 100 hairs being the average rate. But if the hair is thinning or shedding a lot, it could mean you're balding. Usually balding is related to genetics and is a natural consequence of aging, while other cases could be because of a medical condition. Over 85% of men start balding by the time they hit the 50-year mark, while those who have a genetic issue will show signs before they even turn 21. Also, over 50% of women experience balding in their lifetime. The answer is in your hair growth cycle. A typical hair growth cycle has three stages. The anagen phase is when the hair grows and lasts about two to four years. Around 90% of the hair on your scalp is in the anagen phase. The second stage is known as the catagen phase, or transition phase, where the hair follicles shrink over two to three weeks. The third and final phase is the telogen phase, also known as the resting phase. During this time, the hair sheds after three to four months. After the hair falls out, new hair starts to grow, but when the hair loss occurs more often than new hair grows, it results in balding. So what causes balding? Androgenetic alopecia is the main reason for balding in both men and women. Around 95% of balding causes permanent hair loss due to this condition. It isn't necessarily an illness, but can be caused by androgens, genetics, and sometimes the natural aging process. Genetics significantly impact androgenic alopecia and are responsible for many factors. It likely affects enzymes responsible for turning testosterone into endogenous androgen sex steroids and hormones known as DHT. When you have too much DHT or if your hair follicles become too sensitive to DHT, they will start to shrink. Because of this condition, your hair growth's anagen phase becomes shorter, resulting in hair falling out much earlier than expected. Androgenetic alopecia happens slowly and gradually. It shows up in men as a receding hairline and thinning. In women, it typically shows up as thinning throughout the entire scalp. Other reasons for balding. There are other explanations for balding. For instance, hairstyles such as ponytails, cornrows, extensions, and braids can put stress on the hair follicles. The repeated tension causes hair loss. Although this type of hair loss can be reversible in the early stages, it becomes permanent if done for a prolonged period. You can also experience hair loss due to a physical trauma or shock, such as surgery and illness. This usually occurs about two to three months after the event, but will eventually grow back in two to six months. Autoimmune diseases like alopecia areata can cause your body to strike your hair follicles and cause damage to the roots, creating hair loss that will likely not grow back. All of this is excellent information, but is there a cure for balding? Balding may seem unavoidable for most, but that's not necessarily the case. A new study shows there can be a cure for balding in the form of transforming growth factor beta, TGF beta. The research shows a type of protein called cytokines can control your blood cells and the cells in the immune system. It works as the moderator for your hair growth cycle. It decides when the hair follicles will grow and when they will die out. The advantage of this treatment lies in its intensity. It acts like a threshold. When you have a lot of TGF beta, your cells will die and your hair will fall out. When there's too little of the chemical, the cells divide and grow, causing hair to grow. A study proved there was a method to control TGF beta levels to help stimulate hair growth on the scalp. Understanding the regenerative powers of the protein also has broader implications. Since hair follicles are a source of stem cells, studying the TGF-beta properties can also help speed up wound healing. 
stem cells are like a blank canvas that your body can program into different types of cells. One of the unique things about hair follicles is that they are the only organ that regenerates consistently, even when there's no injury. When a hair follicle falls off, the stem cell remains unharmed. As soon as the stem cell gets the signal, it needs to regenerate. They begin dividing and developing into a brand new follicle. Researchers plan to focus on these unique regenerative cells and help find methods to heal wounds quickly. It's good to have a cure in sight, but what if we could prevent the issue in the first place? Preventing balding. If you're balding due to genetics, there's not much you can do to prevent it. But there are other causes to baldness that are preventable. Your hairstyle matters a lot. One thing you can do is loosen your hairstyle so you don't damage your hair follicles. You should avoid using tools such as hair straighteners and curling irons, which cause further damage to your roots. Scalp massages can help. Studies have shown that regular massages for your scalp can help improve your hair growth by stimulating blood circulation. But you should make sure you don't overdo these massages. When you rub the hair follicles and put them under stress, they can get damaged. Quitting smoking can do good. Research has shown a relationship between smoking and hair loss. So if you're somebody who smokes quite a lot, you should try to quit to prevent hair fall. Be mindful of the medication you use. You should check with your doctor if you notice that you're losing more hair since you've started taking any specific medication. Either they can suggest measures or prescribe alternative medications to prevent balding. Your diet is essential. If your diet does not have the necessary nutrients, your hair follicles will not get the vitamins and minerals they need to remain strong. In fact, one study proved that there could be an increase in hair growth in women with a higher amount of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in their diet. The food you include in your daily diet should be rich in protein, biotin, iron, omega fatty acids, and antioxidants. Try incorporating more eggs, spinach, fatty fish, and berries into your meals to help reduce hair loss and improve hair density. From genetics to your diet, there are a number of factors that affect the growth of your hair. Interested in knowing more about growing your hair naturally? Let's keep the conversation going with a couple more videos, shall we? Watch 10 Tips to Naturally Regrow Your Hair. You can also try our video on 13 ways to regrow your hair naturally and forget about bald spots. Go ahead, click one. Or better yet, watch both and learn more about your hair health. Do you think balding is unavoidable? Let us know in the comments below.